Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because I, I lost everything. I cannot see anything, but it's fine. Um, we saw how the sectors changed and everything uh, moving from traditional to everything in digital. So perhaps uh, looking forward to hear some insights from Danko. Uh, he is a principal manager from BizB Solution. And uh, he will talk about how from general consulting to more specialized growth strategies. So this is very, very up to date. So uh, Danko, uh, pleasure to having you here, even though I cannot see anything right now, so. No, no worries. I can see everybody and everybody can see you. Perfect. So hello everybody, my name is Dancho and uh, I wanted to, to be part of this network and actually share you the story uh, how as a management consultant within this crisis we managed to shift from being a general consulting company into a more specialized growth consultant, consulting company. Uh, I will share you my screen, uh, which one it is, it's this one. So I'll just run up the slides. So before I begin, I saw some interesting comments from Yehona. You also said that the BCC is starting to do some speci specialization, which is great to hear. And also I heard from Roden that during this COVID crisis, companies realized that they need to change. It's not the when, but just COVID pushed people that really change was a must. And also I heard Linda's presentation, presentation, which was perfect because during the COVID there was increased demand in digitalization and going over toward the, the online world. Uh, since I assume some of you know me, but I just choose to put a one short slide just to give you some background about me. From a personal level, I'm a serial entrepreneur and fascinated by business concepts. I have started several businesses and BSB Solution is my latest business over the last five years. Uh, I'm a proud father of a three-year-old boy, which takes all my free time that I have beyond working. And I'm from Kavazarce. I don't know if you know where is that, but it is the capital of wine and Arakia production. Sorry? Maybe it was some notification from somebody, so. Oh, so Kavadar is the a good place where you're coming from, so. <laughs> uh -huh. it, I'm usually mentioning it because the majority of the wine and rakia that are produced in Macedonia are from my, my native city. So on a formal level, I have a bachelor in economics. I did a master of science on entrepreneurship and an executive MBA on, on management. Uh, I'm also a certified management consultant by the ICMCI. Uh, I also have a certification from the Chartered Management Institute on a level seven diploma in strategic management and leadership. And together with Alexander, I'm also in the MCA 2000, but I'm more in the supervisory board. Experience-wise, uh, I started my first business like 12 or 13 years ago, which was a mobile marketing agency working with SMS advertising. Uh, then I moved working with a Dutch development organization, building some agricultural business incubators and cooperatives as business entities. Uh, then I moved to a UK company where I actually held them help them enter the Macedonian market and establish their presence. And over the last five years, I moved to a private consulting where I have BSB Solution. I wanted just in short to give you the, the background on how, on who I am. And moving onward, I wanted to, wait, I'll probably close the video so you can see the whole presentation. Uh, in short, the BSB journey to growth is that we started in 2015 and it was a very boutique consulting company. It was me, my wife, and we got four interns at the start in order to, to get things moving. Uh, when we start, we had only two services, which were market research and business planning, which I believe every consultant offers this kind of services. By early 2020, we made some significant growth. We grow to 20 business analysts in-house, all full-time employees, and we increased our services to, to eight services. Uh, now we're situated in Skopje. We're having 224 square meter of offices. Uh, we have 20 business analysts in-house full-time. Uh, we have so far worked with more than 300 clients from more than three, with more than 30 uh, countries worldwide. 
I wanted to just to give you a short perspective that it's not that we started during the corona, but we had five years growth path. And then, uh, okay, so one more slide. What kind of services are we offering as a generalist? So we started with the market research, actually helping entrepreneurs and startups if they have an idea to do business idea validation, whether it's worth pursuing. If the idea is strong enough, most of them are actually moving toward a business plan where we were doing the other parts of needed to start a business, including the financial modeling. Uh, for the start, for the companies that started, we were offering uh, supply side service, sell side service. On the supply side, we had product sourcing, where we were actually helping companies finding their ideal suppliers, either from China or from different parts from the world. While on the sell side was the lead generation, where we were finding database of highly targeted prospects. Uh, the other four services grow as we grow as a company. So we had testing and validation for the IT companies when they had an MVP. Uh, we added the email marketing as part of our service. Uh, as you can see, we love the B concept. So our entire BSB branding is on the B concept. So each service has its own B with its own character. And uh, from there, we actually added the rent to be service where we said, okay, we are actually uh, a man for hire. If you need a specific service, we'll find it, we'll add it into our scope and we can do any kind of service, which led to the audio analysis, a project we were doing for three or four years. And as you can see, we were everywhere, working with everybody, doing everything. And that's actually the short for, for a generalist. And then we got the COVID-19. And it doesn't hit only us as a consulting company, but it also affects the B2B sector in, in general. Uh, the first problem that we got was that many of the projects that we had ongoing were actually paused and they were put on hold. I mean, COVID came up, quarantine was introduced and companies was a bit scared and uh, many of the projects that we were working on were directly or indirectly impacted by the, by the COVID. Uh, another problem that came was the delay of planned project because we also had plans for March, April, May, June as a regular company, but uh, many of the clients just delayed the plans, the started date from the project because everybody were, let's stop, let's see what happens and hopefully things will come to better and then we can continue with the projects. Uh, also, we were working with some clients that had some good investment plans and some growth projects, but I think that during this crisis, all the investments were postponed. Actually, the majority, not all, were postponed during to see un until some uh, certainty comes in the future on where the COVID is, go is going. Now, I'm sorry uh, for interrupting. Just yes, yeah, the same case here as well. Did these companies now in October return asking you, can we continue the project or is still postponed? Because in here, we kind of started from September, like, like a back to normal, even though I'm at home, but still we are going back and forth, office life and everything. So did the job that was postponed March, April, it's now back to normal or still it's ongoing? Um, first of September, we've experienced some uh, peak of requests, but now it's interesting, uh, Yehona, we actually stopped working this kind of services because once we moved to the specialization, we said, okay, we're gonna keep with the projects that we made commitment already, but we're gonna try to phase out from our existing services and more specialized over the, the growth solution that we have. So uh, some companies are now coming back and saying, okay, can we now do a business plan? And we're just saying, sorry, we actually phased out from that area and our focus is more toward helping companies grow. Uh, to continue, but it was a good question, uh, the work from home affected everybody. I mean, we were not ready just over two days, the, the country to decide, okay, quarantine, no more office working, everybody just pick up your PCs or laptops and everything and just move working from home, which opened a lot of problems, either in connecting, in coordinating, in organizing, in HR, in marketing and sales. And here I had a consulting dilemma I was hoping to, to discuss at the end of this uh, presentation was that it's a consulting dilemma. I mean, 
On the one hand, it's up to us, the consultants, to actually help the companies to survive the crisis and overcome the problems. But on the other hand, we have the budgets that are getting tighter and tighter, tighter and tighter due to the COVID-19, which also makes an impact on us as a companies as well. So it was a dilemma whether we should try to help companies, but we also need to figure out to stay afloat as well as the consulting companies, because if we give services for free, then we will went bankrupt as well. So that was one dilemma I left it here in the presentation. Uh, more specifically, into the marketing and sales, uh, B2B marketing and sales ceased to exist somewhere in March and April. Everything was canceled, either physical exhibitions, conference, other B2B events. With the restricted traveling, all the airlines were shut down. Even within the same countries, there was limited uh, traveling, which make B2B life very, very hard. I mean, Facebook ads are here, but they're really not meant for the B2B world because in B2B, usually there are multiple people involved. There is a longer sell cycles and there is a more complex approach where Facebook is more B2C approach where you just put some ad, people click and you just get some traffic. So unable to find new leads and clients was the major problem that we experienced during this Corona crisis, but also most of the clients that we talked around had the same problem, how to stay afloat without getting some financial crisis. Now, driven by this need, we actually introduced our lead generation and appointment setting, which we had some bits before, like building a database or doing some email marketing, but now it became a complete solution where we actually help B2B world uh, identifying potential clients, uh, reaching out to them, building some relationship and scheduling appointments. And in order to be even more focused, we now specialized into the high ticket service providers because we know that for them, it's most worthwhile the, the, the methodology and the framework that we're doing. So to give you some background on what we figured out, the Queen's B outbound growth, that's how we named our Queen B because we're still working in the B naming in our company. Uh, we kept the database building and the market research and the email, but we actually added the copywriter, the LinkedIn outreach and the nurture part. So it is not an individual service or individual activity, but it's actually a set of services that combined together actually give some pretty amazing results. So we started working on this. I can quickly go over each just to give you an idea of how the process work. The first step is actually to define the ideal clients. In our B world, that is actually the flower scouting. So we're sending several bees on different fields in order to identify which target is best and which target will yield the best results. And same into the B2B, a small research should be defined, should be made in order to see who are the best target that the company should pursue. Once that is done, we have the crafting of the messages, which in our Bisbee world is the honeycomb creation. So in order the bees to create the honey, they need some honeycombs in order where they would store the, the honey. And similar copywriting in cold prospecting is completely different world when it comes compared to the inbound world. So the logic here was that instead of waiting during the corona, someone to call you and just pick up the phone, we invented a proactive approach where we are actively looking for potential clients. Moving from the uh, copywriting, it is a building of a database. So then we send out uh, the bees to actually collect the nectar from the different fields. And into the B2B world, this is actually creating a database of highly targeted, highly specific prospects with their contact information that you can then reach out to them and start building the, the relationship. Once the database is built, am I going too fast? Because I know that we are on a time schedule, so I just wanted to... Well, for me, it's fine, I think it's, uh, yeah. Okay, so then we started with the reach out where we started the honey production in our BSB logic where we're doing through email and, and LinkedIn. For LinkedIn, we have our Linda, who is actually going on LinkedIn, approaching uh, highly targeted prospects. And it's not a sales oriented approach, it's more relationship oriented approach. So for example, if I'm targeting management consultants, I'm not gonna go on LinkedIn and hide buy my services, buy my services, buy my services. It's just, I will try to connect with them and start building some relationship and conversation. 
if there is opportunity down the road or a need, then I can actually try to present my solutions or even our clients. But at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a platform for sharing B2B relationship and building strong connections, not just going and spam people with sales letters. Some people prefer LinkedIn outreach, while other ones are still using the, the old-fashioned email. And for that, we have Milo's, where through a different sequence of messaging, we are also trying to build the relationship. The final step of the six-step solution that we introduced was the honey savoring, because it's not just you just figure out some messages and reach out to your ideal target, but once they start responding, it's actually uh, nurturing nurturing them into a meaningful relationship. So even if they don't have a need at this point, even in future, they actually have a need, they could, uh, they could know that you're the go-to guy for that specific solution. So from the, our general approach where we were focused, actually not focused, where we were generally uh, offering all different kinds of services, uh, we actually, during the Corona, developed this solution where we realized that it has significant benefit and it actually changed our company upside down. We've tried with different target. We saw that some, not everybody can benefit from this new solution. So our focus are now B2B businesses with complex solution involving multiple peoples and longer sell cycle. So we named them uh, high ticket service providers. So any company that has expensive services uh, could benefit a lot from this uh, growth solution. So we defined four main categories, which are consultants, software providers, SaaS, agencies, marketing or sales, and other high ticket service providers. The results that we actually managed to get from, from this new solution that we offered is that BSB started growing exponentially. So instead of being in a crisis during the COVID, we actually landed 50 new clients during this COVID-19, which for us was a revelation in that short period of six months, not to just figure out the framework, but to polish it, test it on the market and actually attract a lot of clients. Uh, we also managed to make it a bit affordable because we added some automations and other software solution that helped us half automation at least. And we managed to show some very good results for the clients. So within the first month, we, we managed to start scheduling uh, meetings for our clients. And even many of our clients managed to get new clients. So our clients started getting clients, which for us was a very positive result. Now, driven by this, we actually decided to rebrand BSB from a general consulting company into a B2B outreach company. Now, this helped us significantly because now that we know what we want to do and who we want to serve, it, it gives us a very bigger clarity. We know now who we want to target as a specialized target, and we get a very big focus. Focus on the execution. We can now standardize, okay, in step one, we do this, we do this, we do this, and we can start, uh, how is it called? Instead of making a tailored solution, we can now productivize our solution because we know what are the steps, what are the benefits, and how it can be done. But also our messaging on the marketing and sales now becomes more clear because we are no longer, well, we are a consulting company. What do you do? Well, we are a man for hire. If you need business plan, we can do it. If you need uh, uh, HR consulting, we can do it. If you need marketing, we can do it. Now we are actually go-to when it comes to B2B outreach. And within a few months, we positioned ourselves in Macedonia that now when someone says, okay, I need some help with generating new leads or finding new clients into the B2B area, they're like, do you know BSB? They are actually the experts in that area. So to summarize, I had three main recommendations that we've learned during this COVID crisis is that I know that many of the management consulting companies start as a generalist and most probably that is because there is not enough work to specialize just in one area. But the moment you specialize, you're becoming the go-to guy for one key service, regardless whether that's your specialist in HR or your specialist in finance or specialist in marketing and sales, which is in our case, uh, you're, you're starting to put your foot on the, on the World Wild Web. People know that if they need that kind of service, that's the go-to guy for that specific service. That was our first lesson learned. And the second one, even if you have a very specialized service, you cannot help everybody. Uh, you need to actually approach the ones that you know you can help and the ones that 
would get the best benefit from, from your solution. And the third recommendation was that once the one and two are actually sorted out, the third, it comes on its own. Then you have a really clear focus where you can actually focus your marketing and sales activities. So rather than just talking generally, we are consulting, you're now more focused in your, your activities. I think that was the, the part of, of my presentation. I just wanted to show you now, if I have two more minutes, uh, the, the website, can you see? currently the website or I've just shared only the PowerPoint presentation. I can just hear your voice. That's it. I cannot see anyone still. So ah. it's, it's still the presentation. It's still in the okay. presentation, but it's okay. If, if that's the case, I just need to figure out how to stop sharing the presentation. Stop share, found it. And now I want to share the website because I just wanted to show you the impact that I was able to see just by changing, by getting the focus. Here is our current website where, as you can see, we offer all kinds of services. And from market research to business plan to product sourcing to rent to be to lead generation. And as you can see, we cannot be very specific because we need to collect, collectively offer all our service. But now we're actually having a new website, which is expected actually tomorrow or early next week, where all our website is now restructured around the Prince B outbound growth, where this is actually now our solution. It's not a set of service that you can just buy one individually, but it's actually a set. And depending on whether you're a consultant, software provider, agency, you can click here and you will get a tailored on how we can specifically help those four targeted positions. Now, this helps us that if someone is a software company, we can focus our copy, we can focus our marketing, we can show some testimonials from software providers, we can show uh, some case studies from other software companies that we worked with. And that's actually the focus I wanted to share with you, that it's not just you can uh, say I'm targeting this target and this service, but actually you can communicate that on your website and you can communicate uh, through your marketing channels and, and sales. So that was actually the, the, the success story I wanted to, to present today. Uh, are there any questions? It looks like we don't have questions. Okay, if that's the case, then I'll, I'll mute myself and give the, the space for the Thank next. Thank you very much, Danko. We have a B2B organizing in two weeks with, uh, with this partners. Uh, mm -hmm. So perhaps, uh, hopefully you are there so you can have some yes, help yes. some of the companies in the regional level. So it will be a pleasure having you and maybe we can use you for some tips. In That's our the one on the 20th? Yes, the one in the 20th, yeah, yeah. yes, perfect. Because we have a lot of companies who are specialized in marketing, but not in B2B. And perhaps we as an organization can ask you some tips on how to do. Uh, That's the exactly my point, Yehona, why when, when you actually specialize on something, you start, the, the, the things start connect because uh, if we say we're management consulting, I'm sure that there are plenty of management consultants. But then if you say, I know a guy for finance, I know a guy for a B2B, it's not just marketing and sales, but it's B2B sales and it's not ads or something, but it's actually B2B prospecting. That is a very niche specialty. And uh, for the one end, you're specializing in that particular area, but on the other hand, you're actually uh, putting yourself as a go-to person for that particular set. Precisely. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure hearing your passionate business. So thank you for sharing with us. And now we